first into the tank tonight, a young entrepreneur with serious designs on becoming the next Richard Branson. I'm Mick Spencer, I'm 25 and I'm from Canberra. January 2016, guys, we get refreshed from holidays straight back in. I don't know any better than to have a big life. Since I was a kid, even at 12, I was washing windows, I was going to garage sales, buying stuff, selling it online. Dad gave me his old little garage area and that was where it all began. Nick's got an inherited eye condition, which is extreme short-sightedness and night blindness. And he had glasses when he was seven months of age. He was pretty heavily bullied as a young kid because he was, he was the fat kid with the thick glasses at school. And that broke our hearts, you know, and that turned him into a bit of an introvert. Looking back on it now, having been born with severe short-sighted eyesight, it's all a part of the DNA it creates to go out into the world and, and build your own life. So how's the prep going, Mick? Yeah, how's it going? Yeah, good. And then as I got older, I realised I wanted to get into sport, realised I wanted to get into making a difference and to build a business. And mixing all those three key passions of mine, I was, you know, I was able to get into what I did. And I'm really excited. I'm going to learn a lot off the Sharks. And if they were to invest, there's a massive opportunity for the brand to be exposed to people who, you know, may not have been to before. And so fingers crossed. Sharks. My name is Mick Spencer and I'm the founder and managing director of On The Go Sports. I'm here asking for $300,000 investment for a 10% equity stake in my company. Four years ago, a sports event came to me with a really big problem. They'd pre-sold 400 cycling jerseys and needed them in less than three weeks because a staff member had left without ordering them. Problem was, no manufacturer in the world could do it in less than 10. I promised to deliver and found a way. And when I did, I uncovered an even bigger problem. Retailers, businesses, teams, schools all around the world had a growing demand for custom-made sportswear fast. But it was always a challenging process. In 2011, with the $150 to my name, I dropped out of university and founded On The Go Sports. Today, we allow customers globally to design their own sportswear beyond what they ever thought was possible. The system that actually created these products is this innovative customised station. Users design their own product online. So um, we've got a soccer jersey up here so people can uh, choose a product. They can change colours, upload their logos. That's great. On The Go is now poised to revolutionise the clothing industry and we're set to become the next big global player in this $200 billion industry. Customers like Ironman, Anytime Fitness, GoPro, national sporting bodies, Olympic teams, all use on-the-go product, along with another 3,500 organisations and growing every day. We've had the likes of Sir Richard Branson in our gear. We're growing at over 80% and this year we're set to turn over 1.6 million. So, sorry, Mick, I'm Steve. Whereabouts are you from, mate? I'm from Canberra. Yeah, oh, don't so, often hear that. Big country yeah. town. And, and so um, 1.6 mil, what's your cost of goods on that? Well, so last year we had a gross margin of 58%. And uh, this, this financial year ahead, we're, we're, we're targeting the same gross margin. What are your other costs? Yeah, sure. So last year we actually rented a small loss. Last year we had a lot of development in our systems. Uh, this year ahead is our, is our first year of profitability forecasted. And you're a good few months in. Are you any reason to believe you're not going to make that? or? Um, we have a pipeline of about $4 million right now. With that pipeline, we've forecasted our average reorder percentages. We've also looked at our current contracts, what they're worth. We're budgeting to turn over $1.6 million okay, this right. year. All right, so it's about a 40%. Okay, yeah, that's cool. No, that's, a, that's a good answer. Yeah, and we're in some final due diligence negotiations right now with Australia's largest sporting governing body, which will be guaranteed a $1 million in sales a year. We're in discussions with well, very... And when you say discussions? So tender process, um, got through from 15 suppliers to five, got yep. through from five to two, yep. and in final negotiations now... And when will you hear out about that? Any day at the, as we speak. Right. So, so as Australian-based companies you're competing with or are you playing global stage? With a tender like what we are in talks at the moment with the Sports Commission, it's global players. How old are you, mate? Just turned 25. 
Mick, you're, uh, you're impressive. You really uh, got the business on a roll. This is a company that started in my parents' garage. We've gotten the business to where it is, but to get it from the business we are today to be doing 25 million in 2020, 100 million in 2025, it's... 100 million in 2025, I like someone with a big goal. Yeah, so. big, hairy, audacious goal. That's it, mate. So Mick, it is so competitive out there. What is the X factor that you have that's winning these contracts? So the biggest thing is speed of delivery. So many of the really big players have really heavy supply chains. That adds time. We're essentially factory direct to customer. We haven't even scratched the surface uh, of where, where this company can go. I think it's... you'll be mentoring a lot of other people soon, the way you're going. You've done an incredible amount in 25 years. Thanks. You're going to succeed. You are. You just are, because you'll make you'll make shit. And I can only go on history and where you are today, not on blue sky. And you've got some amazing blue skies. You've got some great things in the pipeline and great maybes, phenomenal maybes. But right now, the fact is, you've got two hundred fifty-five thousand dollars in profit. So that's the only thing I can go go on by, because that's real. But I'd like to make you an offer based on, on, on fact and what you've got, not what maybe, could be, would be. So what I'd like to offer you is your $300,000, but I want 20%. Thanks. Thanks for the offer. You've got a bigger, bigger vision here, haven't you? I mean, you've seen a $200 billion industry and you want a large chunk of that by the sound of it. I mean, I'll be totally honest with you, I want to, I want to, you know, die one day having excelled a billion dollar company. All right, I'll go and bottom feed with Janine, then I'll offer you the same thing as Janine. 300 grand for the 20%. All right, I'll join their offers, 300,000, 20%. Mick, I, I love your business. You know, you're inspiring, you're focused, you're passionate. My big concern is I'm really worried about the fact that you are in an incredibly competitive environment and you're a player coming out of Australia up against some very, very big, hairy guys. I'm looking at your valuation and I'm going, I'm happy to sit this one out. So, well done. Keep going hard, but for me, I'm out. Thank you very, very much. I am in a quandary because I think that uh, you're very investable and your enthusiasm and passion is wonderful. But I think you've got all the heads you need. I'm sure we could promote your product. But for this deal, I'm out. No problems, thank you. So you got three offers at 300,000 to 20%, all exactly the same. Mick, I think uh, they're playing pretty passive here. Same offer, 300,000 for 20%. Well, we all offer different things, you've got to make a yeah, call, let's hear it. Right. Start, start with Steve. I think, you know, you're one of, one of my, you know, massive aspirations in, in the tech industry. Look, the one thing that's kind of against you is the fact you don't have a great deal of in-house tech, but there's companies who succeed without that, and you seem to be one of those, which is great. You, know, you are going to need more cash. You have this amazing aspirational goal, which I think you can hit. Yeah. Look, I'm basically a common sense businesswoman. I'm not going to be the person that tells you how to get into the right apparel area because that's not my gig. But I think that common sense approach and that targeted marketing is certainly where my strength lies. Yeah, definitely. You're really in the B2B business. I've spent the last 35 years in business to business. I've been in the online business. I know how to drive traffic. But I don't live here. I spend a lot of time traveling, so you won't see much of me. But I, I've always believed there's 24 hours in a day. Um, that's my pitch. So Mick, can I just give you a quick pitch on their behalf? Any of those sharks are going to help you on your journey. The offer's the same. Sure. So if you, if you don't mind, what I'd, what I'd like to do is make a quick call to my CFO. Go ahead. If that's, if that's okay. Go make a call, Mick. James, Mick, how you going? Not bad, how are you? Good, mate, good. Look, uh, in a bit of a bit of a shark fight at the moment. So, really? That's incredible. And I think that there's a, a chance I can go back to them with a counter offer. What an amazing bloke. No, he is, mate, 25. He says Jeez. all the bits. He's gonna try and get us all in for 15%. It's not enough. No. Thanks, mate. Good luck.
So guys, I've had a, had a good chat with my CFO and uh, we, we all think, you know, you guys are all of massive value. So I'd like to, like to make you guys an offer. I'd like to see whether all three of you would want to work together and be involved in this deal. Uh, and I would, I would do that in exchange of 15% equity. So it's 100k each for um, uh, five 100k employees. each in exchange for 15%. There's a significant chunk for each and every one of you. 5%. Not a lot of skin in the game, is it? 5% five, 5 is 5%. Is 5% 5 of a $100 million company is a bit, $20 million company is a bit compared to where we are right now. Mick, we'll do a deal right now if it's 600 for 35%. Between the three of us. It's your final offer. Was it a final offer? It's a final offer. So 600,000 for 35%. 35%. For 35%. Really, it does value the business at a higher multiple than really where it should be right now, today. I think 30% for 600,000 at a company that's poised for massive things is poised. great. Poised, you've got to prove it. It's not proven yet. I really am stuck on 30%. If you guys can each come in for 200K, equaling 600,000 for 30%. What about 33%, 11% each? <laughs> 10% each is just a beautiful figure. <laughs> I, I'm not talking on their behalf. I'm only going to look at them because I'm going to get death rays. I'm happy to do the 30 per cent for the for the 600 for the three of us. Steve, you need to have a quiet chat to the hard woman beside you. Well, no, no, because I'm, I'm getting laser death stares in my skull, saying, "What are you yes. doing?" You need to convince them, mate. I'm I'm with you. What do you want to do? You're the smartest person in the room, you tell me. It's overvalued with that. I can't with Steve. Are you, are you in? Yeah, I've got to be, I guess. Hey. Oh hey. my God, you're so cute. Good to see you. You did a good job. Thank you, you, showed, you showed your mettle today as well. Thank you. Thank so you. if you run your business that well, we're well, all yeah, going to make mean, a lot of money. Yeah, I think uh, that's awesome. Well done. Well, Thanks, stuff, guys. Thank you. Well done. Well done, Mick. Mick, you got a deal. Yeah, feeling really excited right now. I'm, I'm just happy to have negotiated them down to something that was on my terms. High five, guys. We are good not going to lose. Nah. Next is an entrepreneur with a strong food business pedigree who's looking to get his product into every Australian kitchen. Looking forward to the next one, two, three or five years to see this baby grow. Hi Sharks, my name is Benjamin Sear and I'm the founder of Hummingbird. Today I'm seeking $200,000 for a 10% stake in Hummingbird. I founded Hummingbird because I'm definitely part of those 56% of people who'd rather stay in bed those 10 minutes than to prepare a proper breakfast. So I thought I want to solve this problem by offering a healthy and convenient way to enjoy breakfast every day. And the solution to this is Blendies. Blendies are superfood balls. You simply drop into a blender, add food and water, to get your supercharged breakfast smoothie in absolutely no time. And the best part is, for only $9.90 per week, we deliver blendies straight to your doorstep, free of any delivery charge. So forget your nana's 
jam on toast and forget your mum's bowl of cornflakes, Blendies is a solution for your breakfast needs. Okay. Who of you would like to give it a go out here? Oh, yeah. Oh. Give it a crack. Okay. So Benjamin, that's 200,000. Exactly. 10%. So you're valuing your business at a cool $2 million. Correct. Okay. What's that accent we're hearing? I'm half German, half Australian. Right. Grew up in Germany. Benjamin, what are we doing? You're going to do it. All you no. need to do okay. is drop the banana into the blender. There we go. The uh, nutritious looking protein ball. Exactly. And the uh, almond milk. I'm thinking you've got a new casual going to work in one of your local stores. I yeah. wouldn't have him. No, I wouldn't have him. <laughs> He's going, why would I put a banana in it for? <laughs> Might be healthy. OK, you need to drink that, Steve. Oh, no, I just realised that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most nutritious meal he's had in That's about right. six weeks. It won't kill you, Steve. It's going to be OK. You'll live forever after <laughs> He might actually really like it. Cheers. Cheers. I think it's beer. Well, wow, tastes that pretty good. Sound, that doesn't sound. <laughs> no, uh, trust like... me, that's a good response for Steve. Which yes. one? What, what was flavour was mine? Uh, you have the antiox blendy. All right. Oh, this oh, one, I see. One? And that one was the protein one, which yeah. Janine has. Tastes fabulous. It's good. It's not bad. I, I, I've just had the cleanser. Yeah, I gave you the green one. That tastes great. I really like it. Yeah. So uh, what, what brought you to this? After graduating from university, I um, was in the founding team of um, what you now know as Fedora. Yeah. Wow. Um, that was back in Munich in Germany. So Benjamin, sorry, just explain to me what Fedora is. OK. Fedora is a, a delivery service for restaurants that ordinarily wouldn't deliver. OK. I was in charge of um, opening up the western cities of Germany, and then I came here to open up Melbourne and Brisbane. What do you cost to, to produce? Um, the tube cost me $4.50, including the balls, obviously. OK, yep. Um, and we sell it in a single... If you only order it in a single um, order, it's $15.90. However, if you choose a subscription, it gets it gets cheaper. Down, down to 10 bucks, 9 dollars or something. Exactly. Yeah. I want to understand what you got here. Tell me where you guys are at right now. What are your sales? What, what's the profit? We're only selling online. We went live about three months ago, and since we've sold um, $40,000 worth of uh, blendies. So in three months, you've done $40,000 in sales. Yep. That's extraordinary. Three um, months, $40,000 is extraordinary. So are you 100% owner in, in... No, I'm not. Oh. I have two co-founders. Yes. Um, and then we have um, one investor, and we gave the manufacturing company to 10%. Right, and you own the majority? The three founders own 55%. And so how much do you own? 10%. So you said you had this idea. You're now a 10% shareholder. There's a whole bunch of other people. I'm sitting here going, what happened? We actually started right from the start with that shareholder structure. Um, the reason was um, we wanted to grow this fast right from the start. And since I don't have half a million on my bank account... So, so what was the original startup capital? Uh, 420,000. 420,000. Yeah. Who, who contributed that, please? Um, one of the founders, yep. who has 37%, okay, yep. hence the higher share, and one investor. You didn't pay for your equity. I didn't pay for my so equity. So you got what sweat. we call sweat equity because you've got exactly. an experience, a track record. Correct. And you said, I'll put the deal together and run it for you, but you guys put the money in. Correct. OK, now I get it. You're valuing your business at two million bucks. That's a lot of money. It you've is. got a complicated shareholding, which I'm not liking. But I've liking you. At 25, you've done an, you've already got two businesses off the ground, so well done. Convince me that if I give you $200,000, I'm going to see any money back. If I just take the calendar year 2017, um, the sales will be roughly 950,000. Um, is, is that calendar 17? Yeah, right? calendar 17. And in 2018, we want to be at 1.7 million. Hey, uh, Benjamin, I'm going to let you know where I'm at. I, I, I think this is a, uh, another in a long line of fads, to be honest. I'm not a natural consumer of it. I'm not a believer in it, to be honest. So I, I've, quite, uh, I've quite enjoyed hearing your story, but I'll... I'll let you concentrate on the other four and I'll bow you up. Right. Thanks very much, Thank mate. You. Yeah, I like your business, but I am struggling with 
Uh, there's, there's more dilution coming. Cash burn's going to continue, and, and I really, I really detest cash burn. So unfortunately, Benjamin, I'll be a customer, but I won't be an investor today. Right. Thank you. I'm out. I think the product's great. It tastes good. But I feel like I've been invited too late to the party. I'm sorry uh, about that. I don't like evaluation. <laughs> so I wish you luck, okay. but I'm out. Thank you. Obviously, you know I know this space very well and live and breathe it every day. And diehards like me really understand what they need. So, and the needs of everyone in my family are very different. So I worry that it's a bit generic and that people will go, it's a good idea, but then can't be bothered to do it in the future. Thank God, because then they come to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they can afford to come to you every time. I do see it as a mass customer product, just because people want to live healthier. We have five different functionalities, and um, obviously there will be new products in the future. Your valuation is, um, is pretty high for a business that has no track record, uh, no evidence that it's actually going to even succeed, and you have not valued in any execution risk. I'm out. All right, thank you. Benjamin, what are we going to do with you? You know what? I'm going to make you an offer. Benjamin Sear has wowed the sharks with his undoubted business acumen and equally impressive product. You're valuing your business at two million bucks. That's a lot of money, but I'm liking you. At 25, you've already got two businesses off the ground, so well done. But a complicated company structure has seen four sharks bow out. Benjamin, what are we going to do with you? You know what? I'm going to invest in you. I actually think if it's not this, it'll be something else. So the only way I can get anywhere near the number is to split it, meaning some equity and some loan. The offer is $100,000 for 10%, because I don't want to see you diluted any more than you were prepared to go in, and a $100,000 loan. Um, can I have a quick timeout? Sure. Out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. The cost of launching this brand in the US will be huge. Hi, how you go? Come on, Benji. Talk to us. So, Benjamin, big decision to make. Naomi's offered you $100,000 for 10% plus a $100,000 loan. Yes. Um, I had a chat to my two co-founders. We've decided that we can't take um, 100,000 for 10% because um, our current investors would be willing to invest at a higher valuation. Um, the only counter offer I can make is 7%. So, Benjamin, I will be a great fan, but I'm not going to be an investor today. Okay. I wish you all the best. I do know the value that I bring to businesses, but unfortunately, this is not going to be one for me. All right. Good luck. Have Thanks fun. So. I'll be Thank a you. great I appreciate fan. It. Thanks, Thank Benjamin. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Benjamin. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ben, you dodged the bullet. <laughs> With friends like him, who needs enemies? That's what I say. Next into the tank is a savvy 17-year-old who's not letting school get in the way of his sweet entrepreneurial dreams. My ultimate goal for my business is to be a household name throughout the world. Age is no barrier. Cool pants. <laughs> Hi Sharks, my name is Morgan Hipworth. I'm 17 years old and I'm the owner and founder of Bistro Morgan, an artisan donut store based in Melbourne. Oh, oh, no. oh no. Today I'm here for $200,000 in exchange for 20% equity in my business. 
Bistro Morgan was born when I was 13 years old and I started supplying a cafe with local goods. From there, things just kind of blew up. I was featured in numerous media outlets and a whole whirlwind of opportunities came at me. I ended up supplying around 20 cafes around Melbourne until I was absolutely desperate on a permanent store. And my parents being, you know, parents, they were like, no, you're not allowed a permanent store till you're out of school. <laughs> so we came to a compromise that, how about we do a pop-up store? And before they knew, I was on the phone to real estate agents and had already <laughs> sorted out a location for my store. And the eight days went so well, we ended up selling over 10,000 donuts in oh those eight days. Oh my goodness. So from there, the store came up for permanent lease. I eventually convinced my parents after many arguments at the dinner table. <laughs> and the store's been open around 15 months now. We continue to supply around 10 to 20 cafes and dessert bars around Melbourne. So yeah, it's, you know, keeps me busy as well as being in year 12 in high school. So I'm in my final year of school. So I think now's a good time to maybe try some of the dough. Oh, oh, well Thank you, Jenny. Yeah. 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 Well Amazing. Now, fess up the goods. Yeah, let's yeah. try them. Let's yeah. try, right. try them. <laughs> so we got our cookie monster, which is filled with cake batter. This is our class clown, which is filled with chocolate hazelnut and then Kit Kat and marshmallow. A Bruno Mars, which is Mars bar and salted caramel. Triple T's, which is chocolate hazelnut. Tim Tam. <laughs> Date night, which is white chocolate, popcorn, caramel, and chalk hazelnut. And then our gay time crunch, which is based off the ice cream, the golden gay time, and made into a donut. My favourite. I'll have that one in the middle there, this one here. Thank you. The class clown. Class clown. That kind of uh, suits I'll you. I'll take the middle one. Yeah. Thank you. See? And that's got a cake batter in it. Cake batter right? inside, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well you can't you're going to knock, you, knock yourself out, right? You sell it with a syringe, yeah, do you? Yeah, exactly it tastes right. Tastes really good. And who comes up with the recipes? So you were, are asking for 200,000 yep. for 20% valuing yep. your business at $1 million. That's right. That's Quite not a bad ask for a 17 year old. When you said $10,000 worth of sales, how 10,000 donuts. 10,000 10, 10, donuts? Yeah, and the donuts are 550 each for retail. Oh. Oh. 55,000 on your opening weekend in a pop-up. Opening yeah, eight days, yeah. It must have shut mum and dad down, did it? <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> I work about 60 hours a week on the business, and oh, then I'm also in, full. In school. <laughs> Take me through your day. A normal day? OK, so a normal day would be I get up around 4, 4.30, um, head down to the shop, get some of the orders and the wholesale orders out, and then from there I'll head off to school. And I get in, get all my homework done in recess. So I try and work through all my recesses, all my lunch breaks. You're working harder than most people I know. Amazing. Yeah. When do you have fun? This is fun. Oh, good This is what good I answer. absolutely oh, love. Great answer. <laughs> So can we do the, your current financial performance first? So our total revenue for last calendar year was $500,000, with net profit 130. Wow. This year? Four, yeah, four houses, 850,000, and then three to 350 profit. <laughs> oh, wow. Did you clarify for us what you're going to spend the 200,000 on? Yeah, I'd love to have Bistro Morgan flagship stores. Our product is one of those that people will travel for. Listen, uh, Morgan, I I'm already a shareholder in a pretty substantial national donut business, and I I'm not sure I'm the right partner for you to scale this next stage. I think you are a force of nature. You're Thank amazing. You. Thank you. But I'm out. No worries. And Morgan, um, you know, for a middle-aged guy who's trying to keep his weight down, I'm really <coughs> concerned about this product. <laughs> Dangerous, eh? <laughs> That's a good answer. What I notice about my investments lately in the food space is they are in health and wellness products. Yeah. So, for me, I'm out. Yeah, no worries. Morgan, I think you're such a delight Thank you. and such an energy, and um, I'm sure your parents are incredibly proud of you, yeah. and they should be. Uh, it's not an obvious fit for me in terms of the value that I can add. For this deal, I'm out. No worries. Morgan, if there was one person in Australia, yeah whose business you love, 
that you'd love to spend an hour with, who would that be? Um, Janine Ellis. There you go. Oh, that was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate, you can have that. So, I'll make you a deal. I will offer you 200,000 for 42%. Oh, <laughs> bottom feeder. Come on, he's a The reason he's being is this oh. is going to take me a lot more time, so I'm actually valuing in my sweat. <laughs> <laughs> he's a miner. You can't deal inappropriately with miners. What are you doing? Come on now. <laughs> hey? Are well, you in or out, Steve? Well, so um, the deal I was looking at was uh, $200,000 for 30%. So just to summarise, Janine's offered you 200,000 for 42%. Steve has offered you 200,000 for 30%. Is 12% of the business worth the expertise? Mate, 42. That is, I've 42 is horrible. You, you cannot do. I, I ban you. I, I forbid you from doing 42. Is 12% worth the 20 years' experience that I can bring to you during this business? Morgan has landed two sharks willing to invest $200,000 in his donut empire. But they want a much bigger bite of the business than Morgan's proposed 20% stake, with Steve offering 30% and Janine sitting on 42%. I can't... I, I couldn't bear to give away 42% of my own sort of... You're not giving it away. No, no, I know, no, no, that's uh, not, I'm not, I don't mean I'm buying it I know, and I know, also I know. I'm giving you my time. I know, I know. She's ruthless. I think that's yeah. a no. She's ruthless. Make a counter Can you do any better? I'm at 30%, Ooh. mate. I'm at 30%. May I go back and have a chat with my mum and my dad? Absolutely. All right, no worries. I'll be back. Have a chat. Thanks. I'm not too. <laughs> Janine, he's not going to give you 42%. Well, he can come back for the counter. Hmm? You're worthless. I think you need to speak yeah. to Dad. Yeah? Hi, Hey, it's me. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hey, it's me. Oh, good night, mate. We've got two offers. We've got one from Janine Alice um, yes. for the 200000 but it's for 42%. I yeah. think you know how I feel about that. Yeah. And then we've got one from Steve for 30%. I think that they're getting um, something pretty easy, that you've got to stick with 20%. Uh, you don't move from that. Here he comes. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's Mum. Ah. Mum's crazy. I can see it. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. You are? I'm Ellie. I'm Ellie's mum. Hi, Ellie. Yeah. How are you? Hi, Ellie. Thank proud. you. A proud mum indeed. Yes, yeah, he keeps us busy. He keeps <laughs> you busy. <laughs> and challenged. And yeah. challenged. But yeah, we just call my dad as well. Oh, yeah. good. So you consulted the board, I get that. We did. Yeah. So just to remind you, Janine's offered you 200,000 for 42% of your business. Yeah. And Steve has offered you 200,000 for 30% of your business. So what are you going to do? So we've had a bit of a chat. My dad was pretty firm. <laughs> uh, so he thinks that I'm a worthwhile investment as such. So would any of you be willing to do anything for 20? 20% a no. I will do 33%. I know this. I have lived every up, every down, every tier. So I think you're getting me cheap for 33. Steve, are you going to revise your offer? Um, I'm not. I'm not changing my offer. Okay. So what are you going to do? Morgan, you're allowed to counter. Yeah. Do you need me to do 25%? Please, just go into the 20s. Please, oh. Janine. It's... Don't get on your knees, whatever you do. <laughs> I want to do the deal with you, but for, for me, I'm, I'm not prepared to move at all. 
if you walk away from here, I will still spend time with you. I don't want you to feel that it's bad. Yeah. I actually know that what I've offered is actually a good deal, yeah. but I don't want you feeling that. So you've got me either way, but you can have me as an equity holder, yeah. or you can have me as a mentor. Yeah. Okay, well, um, unfortunately, we don't feel comfortable going above the 20% mark at this point in time. I, I can't go yeah, below. that's okay. But I will still spend time with you. Yeah. We would love to take you up on having a you know, relationship. Mate, you've got me. <laughs> and who knows, I may be an equity partner. Yeah, no, somewhere no. down the track. Right. But I will definitely, definitely, Thank definitely you. be catching up. Thank you, Janine. Well done. Congratulations. Thank Thank you. Amazing. No Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, well done. Thank Great to meet you. Thank you so much. So, Morgan, well done. Go out of here proud of what you've done. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Morgan. He would have been better off having you as a partner, and he will grow faster. So no, no. Thank I think you, Andrew. We'll I find, agree with that. I think he will find he will do OK. I'll help him. I'm real happy to have Janine as a mentor. She's got so Fantastic. much experience in the food sector, and it's just absolutely amazing to just pick her brains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like the biggest bunch of fluff I've ever heard in my life. He's the feistiest shark of them all. Stephen Baxter, the grumpy bastard. And the others love winding him up. <laughs> oh, I feel like just having some fun. Pinched a few deals off you this season. Oh, another one. Another one. But when it comes to business... Lord. ...he knows what he likes. I mean, what do I need to do to get you? And he'll do whatever it takes to get it. We're going to blow this up. We are going to monster and destroy things. You name your price. This is Shark Tank. Business is ageless and it's timeless. I didn't start my business until, oh, I was a little older, so there's plenty of time yet. If I find an older person with that passion and that ability to focus, I'll back them. What, what do you think about the glasses? The which? My glasses. No, they're all. Next into the tank is an inventor team with a unique product and a combined age of nearly 150 years. John, we're almost there. But can they nail down a deal with a shark? This invention has been 28 years in the making. It's the only one of its kind. It's a world changer. It is going to be an absolute winner. Here, yeah, John. Oh, cute. I love the red braces. <laughs> I think that's leaning towards someone here. Matches the dress. It's meant to be. Bit of eye candy here. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Sharks. Uh, I'm Bill. I'm John. We met through the Inventors Association in Melbourne. Oh, wow. There's an Inventors yeah. Association. Yeah, there's an Inventors oh, Association in Melbourne. Uh, John has created a double chuck drill. Mm, creative. I like it. Many years ago, I was trying to build a cubby house for my children. I had a ladder and I was going up and I was drilling the holes. Then I'd come down, I'd pick up the next cordless drill, then I'd screw the screws in. Oh, blow this, I'm wasting too much time. I'd go out and buy a double chuck drill. No such thing. So I built my first prototype in 1990. So that's 28 years. That's been a long journey. I've interviewed many carpenters, plumbers, electricians, DIYs, and the response to buying a one-handed double chuck drill has been absolutely electrifying, which is what's kept me going. But uh, we've stopped now because uh, we've run out of dosh. Oh, that happens. It is patented in Australia. Number 2008 314 052. <laughs> and we have a patent in the UK. Seven double nine seven. Uh, we believe uh, two, one. you. We believe you on the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we would like you to invest in our business for ninety thousand dollars to buy twenty five percent of our business. John's been at it for quite a long time, and this is probably our last chance. So we need you. <laughs> <laughs> Bill and John, thank you so much for coming today. Thank yeah, you. I'm enjoying this pitch already, and you've barely started. <laughs> So you're asking for $90,000 for 25%, yes. which values your business? At $360,000. $360,000. Oh, Andrew, good man on the figures. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a low valuation, and the reason for that is that we are not in production yet. Tell us, what is a double chuck drill? Let's show us how it works. We're going to come up here, 
All right, let's, let's have a look. Come on. Show us how it works. Can you hold those for me, please? Can I hold some? Yeah, you can hold some. Thank you. I always thought you had a screw loose. <laughs> As you can see, you drill your pilot hole and then press the chuck, chuck change. That's amazing. So, so this rotation is the key thing. Yes, yes. That's what the patent's on yes. the automatic change. That's a double chucker. Look at it. He loves this. He loves this invention, doesn't he? <laughs> Hello, anybody hey, home? John, come, come to come us. Back. Thank you. That's really, really. That's really cool. It is great... Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And it's unique. There are multi-head drills out there, aren't there? I'm sure there yes, are. Yes, there are. How are they different to yours? You've got to use two hands to change the chucks. So you basically got to. So this is this is all You've about. You've got to turn it physically. Yes, yeah, I thought. And yeah. the uh, worksafe people don't like that because of the chance that the trigger should, could turn it yeah. and drill their hand. Wow. How much money have you invested in this, John? Do you really want to know that, Andrew? I'm afraid so. 2.3. 2.3 million, million dollars. Oh, my God. Wow. Where did you get 2.3 million dollars from? I had two properties. Two farms. So you sold the properties to pay for this invention? Well, the bank said I had to. I owed them too much money. You've got to remember is that I'm just a farmer and um, I'm not really a businessman and so I made a few mistakes. I'm still flabbergasted over you've put 2.3 million yeah, into so this. Yeah, so am I, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> John, over the years, you know, when you sold the first farm and then you've put more and more money into it, was there ever a moment that you went, I'm out? No, never. But you haven't sold one. No, not just why we're here. Do you own the patent, John? Yes. And Bill, do you own any shares in this? 20%. And have you put real dough in? As in time and effort. Bill's on board because well, of his expertise and he's a businessman and I'm not. So Bill, how long have you been on the journey with John? Probably close to three years now. So in all that time, did you ever ponder, this is a dead horse and we're flogging it too hard? I'm a firm believer that the concept is great. What I've done since I've been involved with John is said, don't spend any more money. Okay. Excellent. Let's assess this. Let's work out the best way of going about That's it. That's right. And don't put good money after bad. You didn't want to invalidate him and his invention, but at the same time, you didn't want him to spend any more money. No. I got it. So who have you shown it to? Which of the global brands in this machine, this tools business, have you shown it to? We showed it to TTI in Hong Kong, Tectonic Industries. Yeah. And um, we've showed it to uh, Bosch, Black & Decker. What about DeWalt? Yeah, well, all this was some years ago, Andrew, yeah. So you've got nobody currently reviewing the technology with a view to licensing? No. We nearly had uh, a sale to Sears in America who've got almost 4,000 stores. Getting a deal with a retailer is not going to help you because they're going to ask you to produce stock. The license deal is the only way we can rescue you, John. We need to find someone who will take the design license off you and that's the way you get uh, a certain amount back for each drill sold. You'll have to license this to a drill manufacturer. Yep, that'd be the way to go, yeah. So, uh, look, John, negotiate a good deal and try and get as large a portion back of that $2.3 million you possibly can. Mm. I doubt you'll get the whole thing back. I think, honestly, here you're talking about recovering some funds, not getting a return on your investment. Really cool drill, but I'm out. Good luck. OK, Matt. Thanks, Steve. I think it's a very, very clever design and you've solved a problem that is out there. I'm not a natural partner here for you, so and I don't think I can open the doors that you need me to open, so I'm out. Thanks for coming on the show. I think you've taught our audience all sorts of things about entrepreneurship and that includes persistence because, gosh, you guys have absolutely stuck at it. Unfortunately for this deal, though, I'm out. Yep, OK, you okay. go. Yep. Glenn. Bill. You know, I, I am an impatient handyman, and I absolutely will be a customer. Love it. 
It is a really functional, practical tool. Um, I will rack my brains around my network. Let's see if we can get a manufacturer to share your vision. It's a tough gig, but unfortunately today, guys, I'm out. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'd love to help you, but it's an offer of help. It's not an investment. I happen to know the number two guy in DeWalt in the US, which is the trades uh, arm of Back and Deckham. You get me your patent papers, I'll endeavor to see if they will license you and, and rescue this journey of yours, which has been uh, incredible. That will be great. Appreciate it. So, you know, you're not alone in this journey. That's OK. Bill says I've got stickability. Stickability, hey. All the best. Bye, Thanks, Bill and John. John. Take care. That's thank right. you very much. No worries. And thank you for your time. Thank you yeah, for no worries. Oh, hang on. John's not letting go of the product. He's putting it back. Look at that. He's so neat. I love it. We are certainly not going to stop now. It's been a great stepping stone uh, with the Sharks. I'm very pleased. We All the time, I was compared to Elon Musk. I was nominated as Fast Company's most important person in technology, under 30 at the time. If the Sharks invest in us, because we are such an early stage and world first company, they'd be truly believing and designing a better version of the future. Hello, Sharks. Lovely to meet you all. My name's Billy Whitehouse. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Wearable X. Today, I'm going to ask to raise $1.8 million for 18% of my business. <laughs> OK, so Nardi X is a yoga line that pairs with your smartphone via the app. Nardi X has woven in technology for yoga pants. So there are sensors throughout the hips, the knees and the ankles, as well as haptic feedback. And haptic feedback is just a fancy word for vibrational communication on the body. So if you're practicing at home, you don't get the expertise of the teacher, but the pants provide the touch of the teacher so you can practice anywhere, anytime on your own terms. We've done $70,000 worth of sales and we're here really excited to present to you because I think I could learn something from all of you. Would anyone like to have a go? I would love to, I'd love to give it a go actually. I do a bit of yoga, right? So I'd love to sort of be convinced. Absolutely, yes, let's do that. This'll be good. <laughs> beautiful, for yeah. you. Okay. And then beautiful. we'll come back and we'll connect you with your smartphone. All right, beautiful. It's a pretty big, valuation you put out there, $10 million, you're after 1.8 million. Yeah, so we've done a really minimal marketing spend so far yep. and sold $70,000 worth of product. I personally think that we're about to actually hit mass market. And where are you from? I am a Sydney-born girl, um, but I've been in the States now for almost five years. What took you there? Blind ambition. Oh, blind ambition, <laughs> right, okay. Last year, we were nominated by Fast Company as one of the most innovative companies in fitness. Um, so previously, uh, we started in a slightly more risque uh, business. Risque? Oh. Yes, we were making uh, vibrating underpants for couples in long distance relationships. Hang on, hang on a minute, hang on. <laughs> Vi vibrating underwear mm -hmm. for couples in long distance. Now that is very creative. <laughs> Thank you. Hang on, I, I'm trying to get this. Um, it was an insertable piece of a technology that went into our custom underwear and you could control each other from vast distances. Oh my God. Wow. Um, yeah. Hey. Oh, about time. Hey. Oh, How does it feel? It makes you feel really comfortable. Yeah. All right, so I can feel that there's things in it. Can you explain the product? Absolutely. Let's connect you to your Pulse. This is a Pulse. It has the battery and the Bluetooth module so it can communicate back with your smartphone. So this clips just behind your left knee. Oh, okay. I'd, I'd, I'd love to see how that works. I, I, I'm... Absolutely, let's do a demo, 100%. Um, so the, this is, in fact, isn't the sensor. The sensors are woven in through the ankles down here, behind the knees and in the hips. The pose library sits within the app and there's 30 poses in the library that you can learn step by step, one by yeah. one. So, I mean, let's just do a warrior. For, okay, let's do it's, that. It's a beginner pose and it can start you off. Yep. Take a large step forward with your left foot making sure you're able to bend your left knee to align with your ankle. Yep, I can feel it. Sweep up your arms while being sure to engage your back leg. Okay, so it's vibrating at certain points, so what's it trying to tell me? It's trying to show you where to focus and activate those muscles. 
Yep. So what we've seen in our research is that people are practicing yoga and they're either doing it really quickly yep. or they're not really paying attention to what's going on with their body. Yep. So what you're talking about is not necessarily replacing a class, you're talking about the daily adjustments that maybe only a teacher would give you. Exactly. Fine tuning. All right, I look at this here, but there's a couple of poses I'm thinking about that this might be in the way. Is that sort of, have you sort of considered those We sort definitely of have. So if I did a tripod headstand, <laughs> would that have any advantage for me? Let's see that. Here we go. Oh, she's going to do it. Wow! OK, yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> Bloody hell, Janine. Well, well there that? you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to drink a lot of smoothies to do that. There are four or five, sometimes there are six steps to move into each pose. Wow. What the vibrations do is they direct your attention to what part of the body you should focus on. That hurt? No. Then the last step actually reads your body, so the senses are all talking to each other. That's when we're detecting whether you made it into the pose or not. How do they make you feel? Yeah, look, they're, they're super comfortable. And, and interesting, you can feel that there's things in there, but you can't feel that it's on there. Yeah. So, no, well done. Yeah, and well done to you. Oh, mate. Great job, Janine. That's yeah, I'm exhausted just watching you, actually. <laughs> the, the only thing I'm trying to understand about the, the, the product itself is how it can make you better. Right now, it's very targeted. It's someone who wants to get into yoga, not someone who does yoga. Absolutely. It's beginners and intermediates. Right, OK. Or people that do it at home. Let's have a look at the numbers. Let's do it. So why? and how are we going to justify a $10 million valuation? Doing somewhat conservative projections. In the first year, we're planning to do $1.6 million in sales and selling 4,000 units. Um, so we're at $7 million for the year after that, selling up to 12,000 units. So, Billy, the $10 million valuation now is based on the hope of what's going to happen in the future. It's based on the, the sophistication of the platform. Now, I got that because at the end of the day, no matter how sophisticated the platform is, it's all about return on investment for an investor. How many sensors are there? There are five sensors. That's not many, is it? It's actually the most that's on the market. Yeah, really? Okay. Yeah. I have a mild electronics background, just to let you know. So <laughs> know. I'm keen to understand the science here, or the engineering anyway. Do you want to go and put a pair on, Steve? No, I don't actually. No, I don't want him to either. There's a positional element to it, so it knows where your ankle is compared to your knee, and Precisely. therefore it... How does it know that? Is there some sort of strain gauge, or is it a measurement We've, thing? Um, We've collected enough data on hundreds of different yogis. I just know, I, I just know how the tech works. I, I know intimately how the tech works. Right, so could, 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 could your software tell if my leg's there or there? Yes. Oh, I call rubbish. I just, know, I just know how the tech works. I know intimately how the tech works. So what we do when it's reading your body, if you make it into the pose, which Janine did perfectly, then it says congratulations, you can move on to the next pose. If you didn't make it into the pose, which is how we can tell what your body is doing. Bodies are subtly different, right? Well, there's no such thing as an average person, mm. right? Yeah. So, it's, so there's no such thing as an average limb length or anything along those lines. So do you have to calibrate it before you start? So you don't need to calibrate it because of the amount of data that we've collected. Oh, no. But there's, there's a technology that allows you to understand the position of those sensors. It's a software. I want to understand Machine learning. OK, you're using... You, you are driving square pegs in a round holes right now, what you're saying, OK? Is there someone else you've got here who actually understands the tech because you don't at this point in time? Ooh, it's a bit harsh. I'm surprised that you say that because I no, have no, spent no, five years building No, no, what I'm saying is, what I'm, saying is I'm, I'm asking about the technology, fundamentally. The technology. How does it work? We have 99% accuracy every time. Oh. Uh, if you do understand the tech you've described exceptionally poorly today, you, you really have. He's tough, isn't he? So, um, that, that concerns me a lot. I wish you all the best, Billy, but I'm, I'm done. I'm out. OK, thanks, Steve. Billy, so you, you've asked for $1.8 million for 18%, which values at $10 million. 
how will I get my $1.8 million plus my bump? When she flicks the company to Lululemon. <laughs> We're doing conservative projections for the first few years because we're still young, we're still new. Um, but year three is when we see truly exponential growth. And that's when the market, honestly, it's already started listening. The bigger brands like your Lulus and your Nikes have certainly paid attention to us. Um, and they're even saying that 2019 is the year that this explodes. Okay. Billy, I can tell you where I'm at. Um, look, congratulations. I love the Sydney girl made good. Um, for me, you know, the valuation says, you know, risk reward for me is not where I need it to be. I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank you. You are a very impressive person and the pitch has been very impressive. I certainly, I believe your story and you are seriously a good entrepreneur. Um, you don't have a golf product yet. That would have been probably more <laughs> appealing to me, the yoga. Just don't quite understand it. And I guess because I don't quite understand the marketplace for this product, I just can't invest. So unfortunately, today I'm out. Thanks, Glenn. Good luck. Thank you. So, Billy, what a wonderful export you are. <laughs> you know, I'm really proud that you're Australian and representing us overseas. I think that's absolutely fabulous. But just saying, trust me, it works doesn't quite cut it. <laughs> So, thank you so much for coming, but I'm out. Oh, thank you, Naomi. And then there was Janine. Billy, God, you're, you're very impressive. And look, the yoga industry is massive. You're certainly in the right category. I live this world. You know, I, I'm actually only qualified for one thing in my whole life, and that's a yoga instructor, which is... She's had, right? <laughs> that's it, that's the only thing I'm qualified for. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's my passion, and, I, you know, I live it and love it. I think what is really good is that the vibration on it will actually help people because other people get injured in yoga because they don't know how to move it. So I think that you're on the right track. That's investing. But because of the ask is 1.8, it's it's and a $10 million valuation when you haven't actually proven sales just yet. I needed to see more proof in sales. I'm out. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Billy. All the best. <laughs> oh, well, good luck to her. I think she should have stuck with the vibrating underwear myself. That was the, <laughs> that was the killer app. That's actually a really good idea. Not a bad idea. So not getting a deal today isn't going to stop us. We're going to keep going, and we're just going to have to sell a lot of yoga pants. <laughs>